Hey everybody, Randy with Little Buck LS here again. And coming back after a fairly long hiatus. It's been a busy winter and I've been pretty quiet on social media and YouTube, but I'm back. Uh, I've been working up in Fort McMurray. I'm up in my room in uh, camp up here right now. Started a new job working 14 days on and 14 days off. So right in the middle of my 14 day shift up here. But anyways, uh, I found a new piece of software that uh, works better than Tuner Pro. If you've been using free software to tune your LS engines and remove vats and all that type of thing, you probably use Tuner Pro. And if you use Tuner Pro, you're probably familiar with the frustrations of trying to find an XDF file for your uh, bin file and finding a checksum plugin for your XDF file and it gets kind of complicated and frustrating. And I just wanted to show you guys what I am using now. So if you're interested in that, stick around. So the software that I'm using now instead of Tuner Pro is called Universal Patcher. And I will just fire up the laptop here and uh, give you guys a demonstration. It's still not super user friendly. Like uh, even even HP Tuners isn't user friendly, but Tuner Pro and these programs like Universal Patcher take it to a whole nother level. But I will try and step you guys through it and uh, give you guys a demonstration on how to download and install it and how I use it to remove vats. And same as Tuner Pro, uh, and when you're using PCM Hammer and LS Droid, it works on any Gen 3 LS P01 or P59 computer. So let me fire up the laptop view and we will step through downloading and installing Universal Patcher and using it to remove VATs and rear O2 DTCs from, I think the PCM I've got on the bench here is a P01. So let's hook up to that and I'll step you through it. Okay, so we have got uh, the laptop view going here. I will show you guys how to download and install Universal Patcher. Just fire up your Google and uh, you can just type into the browser universal right there. First thing that comes up, universal patcher tuning, tuning tool, universalpatcher.net. So you click on that. And then one other thing I wanted to point out while we're on this page, if you still are using Tuner Pro, uh, the fellow who created Universal Patcher. He has got a good collection of checksum plugins. So if you are using Tuner Pro and can't find the right checksum plugin, you can try a few of the different ones. Um, the, these are some of the older ones that have been floating around on uh, some of the older XDF files. And this is one that uh, the, the creator of the website Jukoi made himself. Anyways, to download Universal Patcher, you just go to download and we're gonna download version, latest version here, uh, but not the beta version, uh, 0.22.03. And one of the problems, uh, the documentation isn't great for Universal Patcher. And any documentation that is here is actually for an older version, like version 0 0.16, um, which I do have installed on my computer, but I see he doesn't offer it anymore on this website. So we're gonna go ahead and download version 0 0.22. But yeah, just be aware that there is kind of a lack of documentation, but I will step you through this as as well as I know how. And as I learn more about it, I will uh, do future videos to uh, update you on what I know. Up in camp in Fort McMurray, like I said, so the internet is sketchy up here. But So we're gonna go to wherever we downloaded it, and it's a zip file, so you right click on it, you'll extract all. 
extract now that it's extracted just open up the folder and go down to universal patcher application you are going to get a warning from uh, windows defender if you run windows defender i just click run anyway universal patcher will fire up i'll just close that window and the web browser behind maximize that uh, and now the cool thing about this newer version of universal patcher is it has pcm hammer built right in so i'm hooked up to uh, po1 pcm right now with my bench harness so if you go to utilities read write pcm and it should fire up yep pcm hammer has fired up uh, now i guess since this is a new install my device isn't um, set up yet so i'm using a j2534 device i'm using my mongoose pro gm2 we'll test it and if we move that out of the way it has found it so we'll hit ok uh, and the first thing I always do whenever I connect to a PCM with PCM Hammer is go read properties. And that'll tell you if the PCM is communicating and the VIN number. So I just grabbed this one out of a stack of PCMs I had here. But we can tell from the VIN number, uh, eighth digit is a T. So that means it's a 5.3 LM7. The tenth digit is a one. That means it is a 2001. OSID is 12202088. And I'm not familiar with that one, uh, whether it's got an S XDF or not. Um, so if you were using Tuner Pro at this point, you'd have to go find an XDF file that matched that operating system. Um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to make changes to the tune. But since we're using Universal Patcher, we don't have to worry about XDF files or checksums or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and go up to tools, read the entire PCM. Uh, I've got one on the go here called YouTube test. I was playing around with it last night. I'll just go save. Yeah, I'll just replace it. Our PCM has been powered on for more than 10 seconds, so we can go continue. This will do its thing for a bit. I will fast forward through it. All right, and when it's done, you'll get this message saying that it has saved the contents of the bin file to this YouTube test bin. So now we can close out of that. And we'll go back into Universal Patcher, go open bin, open that bin file that we just saved. And you'll see it doing its thing here. And so it has pulled 1340 parameters out of this bin file. So let me show you how to navigate. And again, it's slightly more complicated and not as user friendly as HP tuners, but I'll show you what I've learned so far from exploring around in here. If you open up this first branch of the, the tree, so 1D tables, are basically tables that are a single cell. So let's open this up, click on the first one. And yeah, you can see it's just one number in one cell here. And if you look down the bottom right, it'll kind of give you a, between the description or the name of the parameter and the description, you can usually figure out what it does. So. Uh, from the name, we can see it's the one, two shift. Um, and from the description, it basically says it is the speed point when you're in four low. Um, it's the speed at which the transmission will upshift from one to two. 
uh, in wide open throttle and for low condition. So you could adjust that up or down and save your bin file and um, push it back to the PCM with PCM hammer if you wanted to change that. Let's go look at 2D. Um, so 2D is a table, but basically it's just got a single column. So let's look at this first one, cruise line, and you can see it's got speeds and throttle position here. I know if we look down at the description, so it's in, in cruise, uh, first to second gear, uh, based on throttle position sensor. So if you're cruising along at 6% throttle, it's gonna do the one, two shift at nine miles an hour. And there's, yeah, if you hover over it, it gives you a bit of a description as well. So that's a 2D table. 3D is a table with like multiple rows and multiple columns. So if we scroll down again through trial and error, I've kind of found where the main tables are. Maybe I'll do a separate video on that, but MBT spark is your main spark table. So just like HP tuners, you've got your grams per cylinder on one side and RPM on the other side. And this will be your degrees of timing. So at, you know, 2000 RPM and 0.48 grams per cylinder, you've got 30 degrees of spark advance. So those are the 3D tables. If you go down to the next branch, it's all the same parameters. They're just categorized differently. So this branch with the zero one, that's a table with like numerical data or numbers in it. So yeah, we've got that same parameter we looked at earlier. Uh, there's like a, oh, that one's all set to ones, but anyways, it's the same parameters as the, the first branch. They're just organized differently. And yeah, these ones are tables with numerical data. The E are parameters that have like a drop down menu that you can select a few different options from. Like, let's look at engine identifier. It has like a drop down menu that you can pick 5.3, 5.7, 4.8 liter, all the different options there. I'm not sure what E stands for, but basically that's yeah, a drop down menu with different options. And the check mark are parameters that are, are either enabled or disabled, like with a single check box. So um, let's yeah, look at, well, this, this is a useful one to uh, look at here. If you wanna turn off your DTCs, DTC uh, MIL, malfunction indicator, light enable and this is where you would turn off if you scroll to the right like we might as well i was going to show you how to turn off the dtcs anyways so while we're in here let's go so as usual with hp tuners or tuner pro or universal patcher anything that's a sensor two is your rear oxygen sensors Sensor three isn't even used on Gen 3 LSs. So sensor one are the O2 sensors in front of the catalytic converter, which you'll want to keep. So you have like closed loop correction, but sensor two, uh, most guys want to delete because they're getting rid of the catalytic converters and the rear O2 sensors. So we will set all of those to and then if you scroll over a little more to the right, you've got the malfunction indicator light enable. And so we'll turn that off for all of those rear O2s. So we've done bank one, if we scroll down to the low 160s, or yeah, starting at 157, same deal. I just gotta scroll over a bit. We'll set all those to not reported and turn off the 
function indicator light. And now we should be able to exit out of that. Actually, I'm just gonna save it so we don't lose our changes. I'll, normally I would save it under a different file name. Oh yeah, and when you go to save, it is going to ask if you want to apply the modifications. And when I hit yes, let's just watch down on the bottom left here and you will see it fix the checksums as we're saving. So I'll hit okay. And you, if you scroll through, you can see it saying, so it's saving to file. And again, if you were using Tuner Pro, you would uh, need to use the right checksum plugin or in order to fix your checksums, but this does it automatically. You can see it says fixing checksums. Um, OS we didn't modify, so it didn't need to change. But you can see in engine diagnostics, it fixed the checksum. So it automatically did it for you as you saved it. The other uh, branch of the tree here is um, it kind of categorizes them into folders that uh, have a description like this one deals with air conditioning, airflow, alternator, barometer. Um, but the way I find most functions in here is using this search function or they call it a filter up here. So let's say we wanted to um, adjust the set point that our electric fan kicked on. I would type in fan and so it's found 23 parameters related to fan so we can open that up they're all 1d tables so again that means they're a single cell basically and I, again i know from experience and poking around in here that this ect fan one high threshold is the temperature that it will kick on at so you can see here it is set to 140 degrees. So basically it's not enabled, but yeah, if we wanted to change that, you just enter it here. And that's the other thing. This is all in metric units. So it'll be in degrees Celsius or, uh, you know, grams per second instead of pounds per hour when you're dealing with injectors and that type of thing. So you may have to do a bit of conversions and it's, yeah, not, not super user friendly, but seems that's the way the free software is. It's, you got to jump through a little hoops and do a, a bit more work than you would with HP tuners. But yeah, we could set that to, I don't know if you want water boils at 100, so if you, I don't know, maybe we'd want that fan to come on at 95 or something like that, and you hit enter. Uh, and the other thing I will show you is VATS in here is not called VATS, it's called VTD for vehicle theft detection. And this is one of those parameters that it's not described super well, you, you kind of have to know from I think I did a Google search or something to find this out, but if you search for VTD, there's only two parameters. And um, so that's is in this VTD configuration PWM. If you click on that and yeah, we'll apply the modifications of our temperature change on the fan. And then this is the drop down menu where you select um, so zero is a uh, class two VATS or in HP tuners, they call it serial. One is PWM. So this is a stock PCM. So it's set at zero for class two or serial. And we are just going to change that to none. And same deal. Now, if we hit save, it will yeah, we'll apply the modifications and it has fixed the checksum here automatically for us. So now we've made those changes. We should be able to go back in. And write it to the PCM. 
um, but I'm not actually going to do that because I haven't saved the stock PCM file out of this yet. Um, so, uh, uh, but in order to do that, you would just go back to read and write PCM. It would open up. Um, yeah, we can do a test right here. That'll be good enough. And yeah, it's so it's checked all the checksums here. Everything's good. If you were using Tuner Pro and didn't have the right checksum plugin, it would come up with an error here. So it is pretending to erase and pretending to write. So it looks like everything's working the way it should. And if we had actually picked, uh, oh yeah. And another thing, anytime you're wanting to remove VATs, you always do a right full flash, or if you're using HP tuners, do a right entire. Otherwise your VATs may not get disabled. But anyways, looks like this is gonna work. Um, so that is how you download and use Universal Patcher to disable VATs and rear O2s. So um, it is somewhat simpler, I guess, than Tuner Pro in that you don't need to find an, the right XDF and you don't need to uh, find the checksum plugin, but still not super user friendly. So if this is too complicated for you, I do have a bunch of PCMs here. I've got, oh, probably, I started with 15 or so, but now I've got probably a dozen left of P01 and P59 PCMs that I've been in my room up in camp here and sitting around in the evenings and uh, removing vats and getting them uh, ready for your LS swap. So if you're interested in buying a PCM that already has vats removed, you can go to lowbuckls.com forward slash store. And I've got them up for sale on there. And I've got, if you want to send your PCM into me, I can uh, remove vats for you and do this all for you. And I will soon have wiring harnesses up on there as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.